look a lot better than the front of my face. <laughs> That's all the first step.
this offering and multiply and use it, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Yes, First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six has so many things dealing with recovery. Okay, but something that I think we've dealt with, uh, especially in these last two months, uh, people are thrown in the towel. Uh, I've seen kids. Well, the youngest I've heard of was a nine-year-old that committed suicide. You don't even know who you are at nine years old. You literally don't know anything about life. But yet, because of sin, a lot of kids at nine are dealing with struggles and stuff they shouldn't have to deal with. They're dealing with peer pressure that we couldn't even imagine when I was growing up. We didn't have Twitter and Facebook and, and Snapchat and all this stuff where their, their quote unquote friends can bully them into feeling like they're about that big. And we didn't have to deal with that when I was growing up. When you left school and you know, whatever it was, just leave it there and go home and do your own thing. You know, run down the neighborhood or run down the hills or play, you know. Uh, what they call it? Uh, just different things, you know. Back, but the kids today have to deal with a whole different set of things than we did before. And part of the reason is when you take God out of the picture, you don't really know who you are. Yeah. You don't. You don't know. You don't know how much you're worth. What are you worth? And that's why people are. Why should I go through recovery? Why should I go through the pain? Why should I go through the detox? Why should I go? Because you should learn who you are and what you're worth. In First Corinthians chapter. Chapter 6, Paul is sort of chastising them a little bit because they let some sin get into the church. They let it go on. And then they start being very judgmental. So let's talk about what he says here. Verse 7 says, Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you in the church because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you uh, not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud and that, and, and that your brethren. They're defrauding each other. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. Now, he kind of gives us a list here. I'm not going to go line by line because you understand most of the time. I'm going to just touch on a couple of them. But fornicators, what is that? That's, that's you know, sin, uh, sex sin uh, outside of marriage. Uh, whether, you know, there's a, there's a huge list. Idolaters putting things ahead of God, you know, things that you maybe you love here. Back then, they probably had, you know, tricked out cherry or something. I don't know. But uh, now it'd be cars and trucks and, and your job or your boat house or a boat or a houseboat, wow. just things. And uh, adul adulterers obviously is you know having sex with somebody else's spouse. Either you're married or they're married or both of y'all. And uh, effeminate, not being masculine when you're supposed to, nor users of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, wanting something that at this point you shouldn't have, nor drunkards, drinking excessively, uh, revilers, party, uh, extortioners, obviously. Hey, you know, loan me 100 bucks, I'll give it to you in a, in a week. And then you never see it again. Sure. Uh, <laughs> everybody here said that. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul says, none of these things are, these are all bad. And such were some of you. Paul says, this is what you guys are doing. You were like this. I was like this. There's a lot of my sins in that list that we just went through. Okay, this isn't about an attack of pointing fingers at anybody here. These are sins. God is not happy with any of these things, okay? Guess what? I'm looking at a room full of sinners. Now, what sins that, that you may have committed on that are on this list today, I don't know. I don't need to know. I don't need to know what your personal list is, okay? Unless I can help you with it. If we're counseling, that's different. That's, that, and that's going to be private. That's why we're there. we don't sit, start off with saying, okay, you know, I knocked down a fifth yesterday. That's not when we start the meeting. I'm saying come up with something good that God did for us. Hey, God, help me find a job. God, help me stay clean. God, help me do this. You know, I've been clean for so many weeks or months or years. That's why our argument program is totally different than that. Because we're pointing people to him. Because you know what happens is when people talk about their last party, all they're doing is point people to me. And you all know that. If you've ever been in any of the meetings, you've been in any of the rooms, you know that's what it's about. Oh man, you did that one, I did this. Oh you did uh, I did this. You know? And it's about well, you thought each that's oh shoot, I was on that one. I was kidding about it. Okay. Let me tell you what I did. And that's all it's about is about pointing people to oh I'm a bigger sinner than you are. Don't tell me about how bad you got messed up because I'm messed up worse. Okay, guess what? We're all messed up. Amen. Everybody I'm looking at has some messed up parts of your life. And only God can fix them. I can't. Your favorite person in this world can't fix those problems. Amen. Whether it's your spouse, your child, your parent, it doesn't matter. They can't fix that. God can't fix them. Amen. But you have to want to let them. You gotta have to let them want to let them. God's not going to reach down there and just, that's not how he works. You have to surrender. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's some of the most powerful words right there. Paul is talking to the church and says, such were some of you. There were homosexuals in that church. Yeah. They used to be. They got saved and God changed them. Yeah. Because God, they let God change them. You realize if you don't let God change you, you can get saved in this church and you can die in your sin and be a thief the day you die. But you don't have to be. Because see, God forgave you that sin. And when you accepted his forgiveness and the payment for it on the cross, that changed your eternity. But that didn't change you. Amen. You have to let God change you. Okay, I know a lot of Christian thieves. I know a lot of Christian liars. They're not Christ-like, they're saved, but they have no problem throwing out a bunch of garbage or repeating lies. I get tired of it. I have to get off Facebook. There's so much of it. It's like, oh my word. You realize that the person we just shared, that hideous thing that you shared, has a lot of other hideous stuff that they like to talk about too, you know? I try not to, I try not to, I'm not saying I'm perfect with this, but I try not to share stuff from places that are generally just tearing people down, whether it's our country or the president or it, Nobody's perfect. The president's not perfect. The government's not perfect. But I'm, I don't want a whole lot of negative stuff. I did put something a little negative this morning, but I was kind of mad about this whole thing about the police officer putting his, neck, his knee on the guy's neck. Okay, I'm really kind of ticked about that. Yeah, um, okay. That's not how he's supposed to do his job. He's supposed to serve and protect. Okay. Now, if the guy deserves to be arrested, fine, arrest him. But once he's in your custody, his life is in your hands. Literally, if the mob had turned on that fellow to, to attack and try to kill. Uh, George Floyd on the ground there, it would have been his job to protect him. Even if he had laid down his life to protect George. Amen. Because he was now in his custody. Yeah. Amen. Okay, so the fact that they didn't understand that, it, it bothers me a lot. It bothers me all the way inside. I don't know if he was saying it. I hope he was. I've heard good things about it. I don't know. I don't know all the things leading up to it. I didn't watch all the videos because it was just, I was afraid I was going to get too discouraged. But we need to pray for that whole area. Because yeah. yeah. guess what? Those people up there breaking the law, destroying some of their brothers and sisters' property. I mean, that one fellow, poor guy, his business was destroyed. Yeah. Just crying and bawling and stuff like that. It's like. There, there, there's, no, there's no sense to this. This is not about protesting. This is about moving. This is about, yeah. this is about a riot. This is about yeah. doing stuff that you should be doing. And they say, well, we have the right. Well, no, we don't. Okay, pro everybody can protest. Okay, I'm protest. I'm all about that. But. When you destroy people's property and light places on fire, uh, what? To be honest, <coughs> listen, y'all. It does not bother me one iota that they burn the police station down more than it would bother me to burn anybody else's place down. Should they respect the police? Yes, but they should respect your house too. Amen. They should respect your. They burn an entire low-income apartment building down. What about all those people? Was there a place less viable than the police station? Nope. It was not. It all bothers me. Yeah. And it should bother us. But unless we decide, hey, we're not going to do things like that anymore. And when people do those things kind of things, we're going to say, okay, no, that's breaking law. You're hurting people. You're destroying lives. That man, he may not be able to reopen his business because they, <laughs> they robbed him twice. Yeah. Two times. He put up on a big sign, minority owned, you know, his business, in front of his business. Which you would think they respect that, but these aren't people aren't respect anything, okay, because this isn't about protesting an unlawful it's not even happening it's not about them at all, it's just about they're just out there right, they're right, it's the same thing they did they're right, it's about the problem I've got my big screen TV alright, people calling the TVs out knocking people out of the way such for some of us though so I'm not here pointing fingers at any one person up there doing the right thing right now, I'm saying they need healing up there they do, they need healing up there and I mean, tell them about this Christmas or something, because that, that poor young lady that was in the wheelchair trying to stop and come out the back door, and she was holding literally her glasses in her hand. She said, she stabbed me. She stabbed me. Like, she had her glasses in her hand. She, but, you know, she was trying to keep coming out the back of the target, I think. And there's these guys with these carts full of stuff, you know, and she's blocking the door. <laughs> and that one lady just bum rushed her. And that one lady just like, rushed her. She's in a electric wheelchair. And just bum rushed her and like, pushed her out of the way so they get their carts of stuff out the door. <laughs> Man, it was it was Black Friday right there. I'll just tell you. And she did not go. They well, then somebody else uh, sprayed her face full of oh, fire extinguisher. Oh, 
because the one with the, with the with the phone, you can see it's on the thing. She's like, oh, she stabbed people. She stabbed people. She wouldn't stab anybody. She didn't have a knife. She had a pair of glasses in her hand. But then the other person grabbed a, a fire extinguisher, just shot her face full of it. It was like all over and everything like that. And she was she was miserable. I mean, uh, look, she died. Yeah, exactly. Because it takes away the oxygen. So uh, when you pray for them, am I happy? No, I am not happy about any of that stuff. Amen. Some people are justifying saying, oh, well, you know, they're protesting. Oh, they have insurance. Who cares? People have lost their businesses and lives for this COVID thing. Okay? Amen. And we're, we're trying to, we need to pray that we can recover from it. Amen. Financially, okay? I know lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, and lots of restaurants that are closing every every open. Yeah. Okay? And other small businesses that says, we're done. You know, I can't pay $2,000 a month rent for my spot and not have the doors open, you know? And you can't expect people in the village business to give them a free waiver forever. If, my, if I own property that I was renting out, I couldn't do that. So you know, what does that do with recovery? Everything. Okay? Everybody is valuable. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the second we think somebody's less valuable than somebody else, we've already lost. Amen. And unfortunately, sometimes the only thing is less valuable is us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you look in the mirror and you think, what, am I, what good am I? What can I do for God? What can I do to help anybody else? I've, I've messed up here and here and here. And if anybody looks at me, they think, well, you're just a mess. You're just a, a mess up. Yeah, we're all a bunch of mess ups. Yeah. Sure. Totally. But God has a different plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And that verse says, and such for some okay. of us. Mm -hmm. But, ho, 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 it's starting to get good. Hang on a second. The verse is not there, Stan. I might be discouraged. I might even be depressed. You see, God didn't stop there. Yeah. He says, but such are some of you. But ye are washed. Ye are sanctified. First of all, that means clean. Wash means clean. God says, I'm going to wash that sin off of you so that you're not going to look like you're all stinky like you've just been playing in the pig slot. Isn't that awesome, man? Amen. That is awesome. Amen. He doesn't leave us in our sin. God knows that such is some of, that's how we are. Amen. We are thieves. We are fornicators. We are liars. We are murderers. There are people that have done all these sins that God says, that's not good. That's wrong. But now you're washed. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you're sanctified. Sanctified means set apart for a certain special job. That, you know what? When you uh, go in the, in the military, they have certain special things that you have to have special training to do. Whether it's an MP or whether it's a like, Green Beret or whether it's a SEAL team or whatever it is. Uh, you might be uh, airborne, whatever. They all have special training. It's, you don't just come in and say, okay, we're going to need this badge, this badge, this badge. Okay, go do those jobs. No. Everybody goes through basic. Everybody, you know, is a, is a boot, but they, if you get that special training, you step up and you have more jobs and more responsibilities. Guess what? For the common, you're even sanctified. God's given you some special training, some special grace for you to do the job that He's made you to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the same job He gave for the work, it's not the same job He gave for the stand. That's why you're sanctified. Sanctification is set apart for a purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means that you have special training, special things that God's going to show you when you study your Bible every day and you talk to God. He's going to have some special things He shows you that's going to help you do your job today yeah, yeah, yeah. because you're sanctified. Okay? You didn't just make it for nothing. You're not just a blob of tissue that uh, happened because, you know, whatever. God made you and put a soul that's never going to die. That soul is going to live forever, either in heaven or in hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it has a job while you're here. You are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, amen! What does justified mean? That means I get to stand before God. And I'm not going to have to be groveling and waiting for the punishment because my sin has been covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's covered. It's gone. Gone, gone, gone. Yes, my sins are gone. My sins are cast in the deep part of the sea intentionally so that God can say, I'm not going to look at it anymore. Now, if you've never accepted the gift of grace, their sins are still there. God's still looking at you and he can't see you for the sin. But when you accept Jesus as your Savior and say, Lord, I want you to be my Savior. I'm accepting you and only what you did on the cross to get me to heaven. His blood covers those sins. Mm -hmm. Now, what you do from that point on affects your relationship, but not whether you're going to heaven or not. And Paul is telling them, you're washed. You are sanctified. You're justified. Yeah, amen. That means not only can you be set apart for a special job, a special purpose, but you can stand before God and bring your prayers and your requests to Him, knowing that He sees you through the blood of Christ. That's why we have our youth. That's why we have this ministry. That's why we have Mount Baptist Church. If we didn't have a hope that we could be justified in the sight of God, we wouldn't need to do any of this stuff. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit.
spirit of our God. I have a reason to get up tomorrow morning, in spite of my past. Amen. In spite of what I've allowed the devil to trick me into. In spite of all the mistakes I've made, because I'm justified. Amen. And every day I want God to sanctify me and to show me more so I can do a better job of being his child, a better job of being his servant. And every time I mess up, I say, Lord, would you wash me one more time? Yeah. See, I need that washing again and again and again. Amen. The justification happened on the cross. Okay, I accepted that. But that washing, I need that today too. Amen. I'm going to need it tomorrow. Because I had a lot of bad thoughts seeing all the stupid drivers today. I'll tell you what. Amen. They must have all been let out at the same time. I've seen people cut across two or three lanes doing I'm, I'm looking up what? So I, my word. It's unbelievable. You know? If they they should have phased out, you know, maybe if they let the business all go back at the same time, but let the drivers come back maybe like by outlets or something like that. I don't know, but whatever it was, they were they had lost their or loved much. Okay. So I kind of lost my Christ-like spirit a little bit a couple times. I didn't, I'm not saying I called me anything. I used to do. I don't think I did. <laughs> not today. Not today. Oh, yeah. My, my brain was wicked. Okay, my brain was wicked. It was wrong. I'm going to finish with these two verses because this is... We're going to touch on this next week some more, but... What are you worth? What are you worth? Well, first of all, you're worth the blood of Jesus. Because he died on the cross for you. And that's not nothing. Man. Verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? <laughs> which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. You do not belong to you. You belong to him. For ye are bought with the price, which is the blood of Jesus. Therefore, therefore means that what happened before applies to what happens now. Since we know this, what happens next is important. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit with your God's. That's what we want everybody to learn and argue and recover. Amen. Every day, glorify God with this. And as long as I constantly, 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 constantly try to retune my spirit to be in tune with his spirit, that's going to control what comes out of here. Amen. Because when your spirit's right with God, it's going to be you say the right thing. Yeah. When you think the right thing, you're going to say the right thing. When you've got stinking thinking, the wrong thing's going to come out. So why should, why should I stay in recovery? Why should I try to live for God every single day? Because I'm very valuable. I am all of the price. Yes. So I need to glorify God with this body and with my spirit. Amen. Because they're God's. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're all bought with Christ. Have you accepted that gift of salvation? If you haven't, do it tonight. Don't delay. Don't wait till tomorrow. You might not make it till tomorrow. You might be riding home with one of us. I know our drivers. You might not get there. But seriously, why wait? If you're not sure if you're saved, nobody looking around, I'm going to pray for you in a second. Just slip your hand up and I'll pray for you in a second. If you're just not sure if you're saved, maybe you've been saved before. You don't have to keep doing it. I'm just saying, if you're not sure, slip your hand up real quick right now. I'm going to pray for you. Anybody don't. I'm going to have a word of prayer here in a second. I'm going to pray for everybody here. But if you are saved, why don't you decide that you are God's tonight? Don't hold anything back. We all have. I'm looking at myself. But tonight's the night that ends. Tonight's the night that you stop holding back. Say, God, I am yours. Hook, line, and sinker. Lock, stock, and barrel. However you want to say it. Everything of mine is yours, God. And I want you to live through. I want you to sanctify me. Make me fit for the purpose that you made my life. Thank you for your justification, but Lord, give me a clean washing. Nobody's looking around and I said, I'm literally the only one. Ms. Vinny's playing, she's playing with her eyes shut. If anyone said, slip your hand up and say, oh, Jack, I need some clean washing tonight. Just slip your hand up. I'm going to pray for you in a second. I see a bunch of hands. Anybody else? You want to slip your hand up and say, just clean me up tonight. I see some more hands. Anybody else? Nobody's looking good for the tackle right now. This, can you put your hands down? This is just between you and God. You know what? We all do it every day. Amen. I want God's Holy Spirit to just fill you in a mighty way. You know when you got saved, you got the Holy Spirit, but you didn't necessarily give Him all of yourself. Tonight is the time to give it over to Him. Lord, I pray that you bless each one here tonight. Lord, I pray that you remove it in their hearts. 
Lord, it's, it's hard to do a, a regular altar call, but Lord, if anyone here needs to talk to me, Lord, I'm available as soon as we're done. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just fill us with your spirit tonight, Lord. Help us not to hold anything back. Thank you for the sanctification that you've given us. Thank you for the justification from the blood of Jesus. But Lord, tonight, wash us again. Those that raise your hand, especially, Lord, I pray that you just take away those things in their life, Lord, that they've allowed to get in there. Lord. So like cobwebs, Lord, so we don't watch our corners where the cobwebs get in there. And, and every house has them, Lord. And, and every one of us gets those things going on. And I pray that we let you just clean us out tonight. Wash us with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and let us be clean in front of you again so that you can hear our petitions and our prayers. Lord, we have some things to pray for. We have loved ones that need us to pray and hear answers from you. And bless tonight, Lord. Go with us with your blessing, we pray. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. You can run over and stop that real quick, Lord. I appreciate that. I got that one there. Uh, we've got some awards tonight, so I'm going to give these out. Thank you all for listening so well. And uh, I can't wait to see what God's going to do. I just can't wait. God is, he's doing work. I believe we are going to have some revival because of this COVID problem.